as a clinician, getting clients through winter, especially if they're newer to this circadian light-based lifestyle, can have some challenges associated with it. So what are some circadian supports that we could really emphasize for people come this time of year when, yes, it's dark, yes, it's still cold, you know, um, these short days, what am I supposed to do with my food? So let's talk a little bit about uh, seasonal specific circadian supports here. Number one, I tell clients, do the best you can with your blue blockers. It likely won't be perfect in the winter because sometimes where you're located, the sun won't be rising until 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. And sometimes the sun is setting by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And so do I want you wearing orange tone blue blockers that are going to make you sleepy and groggy at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when you've got a work day to continue or when you have to drive home or things like that? No. Absolutely not. That that doesn't have to happen, right? Now it can. Like I do have some clients who do, uh, you know, shift their work schedule accordingly. But if you can't, then you just tell your clients to do the best they can. And so what that could look like is wear those orange tone blue blockers up in the morning, up until the very last minute that you can't wear them anymore. Maybe it's when you dry, are driving into the office or taking your kids to school. Maybe it's when you get off the subway and are entering the, the um, you're entering your office, right? And you uh, choose to no longer wear those orange tone blue blockers. So just do the best you can. Does that mean you're living a quote unquote perfect circadian rhythm lifestyle compared to if you were living just outside and didn't have to go to the office or do any sort of modern living? Yeah, I mean, you might not be perfect. That's okay. And it doesn't have to be. Um, that I think that's where, especially if your clients are kind of new to this, the progression that I see is this drive for doing everything perfectly can sometimes get in the way of telling clients that you can do things as best as you can and still see great results and still give your brain seasonal circadian specific information. And so orange tone blue blockers uh, as long as you can in the morning. Now, in the winter, when there's less light, temperature and meal timing become primary what are called zeitgeivers or time givers to our body. Whereas meal timing and um, temperature matter less in the summer and it really is driven by light, we can start to reinforce circadian signaling through the use of when we eat our first meal and through the use of when, when, if, and if we experience cold. And so I really do love to sync a couple of signals first thing in the morning, um, or maybe not first thing in the morning, I'm going to give you the nuance here, in order to tell the brain that the day has started. And so what does that look like? Well, number one, what in my particular uh, experience here with cl clients and even in my own life, what I will do is I will, again, wear those orange tone blue blockers as long as I can. And I have as such that I will take them off. I will wear my yellow ones as I'm driving the kids to school um, oftentimes. And then when I come back it to the house, that is actually when the sun has started to rise. So for me, I can then get a circadian light signal. So be outside for about five minutes, but reinforce that light signaling where this, the brain is receiving those blue light signals to indicate the start of day. I can reinforce that morning light signaling with, an, with a meal. So very quickly after that is when I will go inside and then choose to eat my largest meal of the day. I want that to be my largest meal of the day because it helps my brain, my nervous system just kind of feel satiated and safe. Um, and then, you know, while can also sync that with a, a temperature exposure. So um, either before or after you eat, I will oftentimes, you know, get an extended period of time outside. So perhaps I'll do a longer sunrise and get a cold exposure, especially on the areas of brown adipose tissue to help signal temperature in my environment or I will get a shorter exposure first thing in the morning for sunrise, eat my meal, and then get a longer exposure um, with what I would call a UVA walk. And so again, exposing the brown adipose tissue, which is the temperature sensing skin and mitochondria, which collarbones, tops of the shoulder blades, uh, along the spine, those are areas where we have these temperature sensing mitochondria that when they sense cold, they start to make heat for us. And so if I can reinforce that consistently, blue blockers until you, you can't in the morning, sync up light signaling, meal and cold exposure, that will go a long way towards signaling to my brain that the day has started. So I've got essentially multiple signals stacked together and not just light as an indication of when my day has started. And here's the here's the nuance with this in terms of seasonal. My my first meal of the day for me where I'm located in, in the summer would be around six o'clock in the morning. So by having that meal two to three hours later, by signaling 
morning light meal cold exposure altogether right there that again gives my body the seasonal information that we've got longer uh, essentially darker mornings uh, we're in a period where we've got less light more darkness then again, throughout the day, clients are probably going to be less likely to want to do things like earth and ground in the colder, darker months of the year. And so what can we do? Well, I still encourage my clients to get light breaks. So I still want my clients to go outside, naked eyes, five minutes here, five minutes there, maybe windows down or sunroof open while driving and to get that light signaling. Uh, but the thing that I really encourage my clients to do in the winter to get their earthing and grounding is to use a bathtub or even use their shower. You can you can get these little covers that will uh, you can get these little covers that you can use to uh, cover up the majority of your shower drain and still leave some of the metal exposed. The metal of the shower drain or the metal of the bathtub drain is grounded. It's connected to Earth's charge. And so simply by having a warm bath or a warm shower and standing on that drain, and if you want to, again, allow some of the water to accumulate in the shower, if that, if that feels safe and it's, it works for your particular shower situation, you can be earthed and grounded. So I encourage people to spend time with longer baths, longer showers in the winter. And don't just view those things as like, superfluous self-care, right? Like, oh yeah, I really don't have time. It's not important. I just need to really quickly, you know, wash my hair, wash my body and get out. I, I encourage you to actually use it as a time for earthing and grounding because that's exactly what it is. Um, and so I love the idea of setting up key times throughout the week. Uh, I tr For me, during the, these months of the year, December, January, February, I really try to um, schedule in a 30 to 60 minute soak in the tub at least two, if not three times a week. Um, I would do more if I could. And then with that, I know I'm earthing, I'm grounding. And then I try to stack that by putting things like Epsom salt into the bath to get that beautiful magnesium into my body. It just, for me, it just feels like a very uh, therapeutic time beyond just like the, the mental de-stressing that I do in the tub. I also know that my body is receiving that earth's charge and is receiving the benefits from that as well. And so you can encourage people to do more grounding through the use of the bath, through the use of the shower. Now, what about then into the evening? Well, you know, again, it's not possible for me to always put on my orange toe blue blockers at sunset. In fact, I coach my daughter's basketball team until after sunset. Um, I will go to my son's basketball games and that is after sunset. So what I do when I am in an environment where I can't wear those orange tone blue blockers, um, or I choose, I should say I choose not to, uh, specifically I've come up with a solution that works for me that is a win-win for me and my children as well. And what that looks like is when I, let's say I'm, I'm in a gym environment, which is garbage fluorescent lighting overhead, yet it's after sunset, I will wear these yellow toned blue blockers and I will wear a hat. Why do I do that? Well, number one, the hat in and of itself will, will prevent a lot of the light that, that could be stimulating me and signaling the middle of the afternoon to my brain artificially. It blocks that from being able to reach the sensors in my eyes that are looking to receive those signals. Remember, the backs of my eyes have sensors for blue light. They're my melanopsin receptors. And those melanopsin receptors are designed to capture the, uh, a majority of their light signaling when the sun is overhead at the high point in the sky. And so if I can block that from being able to enter my eyes and then mitigate some some of the blue through wearing the yellow toned lenses, I'm then able to, pres what, I, what I would call is preserve circadian signaling. Then, you know, if I'm riding in the car, let me see if I've got my glasses here. We go. If I'm riding in the car and I don't have to drive, I will put my yellow, my orange tone blue blockers right away. And then if, or if not, my red tone blue blockers. And if, if let's say I get home and, you know, sometimes after coaching a basketball practice, I still feel a little, um, oh, my body doesn't want, doesn't want to feel like settling down. I feel a little amped up, but I know I want to start settling into a risk, more of a restorative mode. I will put the red ones on right away. And what those red ones do is it, it obviously it's going to block all the blue uh, light. It's going to block all the green light and it's going to dim the light for me as well. And for me, it just puts me into a, a state of 
Huh, right. And so there's strategies like that that we can use with clients during these winter months in order to help them stay as aligned as they can with the light, dark signaling in their environment. Some of the clients that I'm working with, again, the sun sets at three o'clock in the afternoon. So it would be silly of me to say you have to put those orange toe blue blockers on right at three o'clock in the afternoon or else you're out of luck. That's just not the case, right? The human body's intelligent, we're adaptable, but we try to then have them put them on as soon as they possibly can. So the point is to signal seasonality. So we will want clients to experience those blue blockers or blocking blue light for a longer window of time in the winter than we would have them experience in the summer. We would have them experiencing the cold temperature, which is again, that secondary zeitgeber to indicate winter, which they would not be experiencing to the same extent in the summer. And then we also want to be very diligent about syncing that breakfast up with a, uh, some key light darks, or I'm sorry, some key light and temperature signaling, especially in the morning, again, to reinforce the start of the day in the winter months. So I hope this helps give, uh, helps you and gives you a couple of seasonal and circadian supports for your clients, and I'll see you next time.